Praise the Lord, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning, and happy Father's Day to all you fathers that are out there. I hope you have a wonderful day today. Let's go ahead and get ready and get in this word today on this Father Father's Day. We're going to talk about godly imagination leads to manifestation. One more time. Godly imagination leads to manifestation. Let me pray. Father God, I ask this morning that you think through my mind, that you speak through my vocal cord. Lord, I pray, Father God, that it be none of me and all of you. I ask, Father God, that it be uh, completely you taking over, Lord God. I pray, Father God, the word goes forth and I declare it goes forth uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. And as a result, you shall receive the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, people of God, as an act of faith right there at home, stretch your hands toward this Bible and say, this is the Bible. It is the word of God. It is the word of faith. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. My life is better at having heard the word of faith. My ears are open to hear, my heart is ready to receive, and my life is ready to manifest the living word of the living God. One more act of faith, shut your hands toward me. Say, Father, place your anointing on Pastor Henry, give him a word, in due season, that will give my life new reason. I declare now that your word will go forth uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. So one more time, we're talking this morning about godly imagination leads to manifestation. Let me get started. So let's go ahead and start first in the book of uh, 1 Corinthians 5 and 7, very familiar scripture. Uh, I'm going to say it once and I'm going to say it a second time. I want you to repeat it. I want you to say it with me. I'm going to read to you. It says, For we walk by faith and not by sight. Come on, say that with me. Come on, ready? Come on. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Now, so when he's saying we walk by faith, this walk he's talking about is our lifestyle. And, you know, if, if we have a lifestyle of faith, we don't live by what we see, glory to God. You can't go around just living by what you see because there's more to life than what you see. You don't see the wind coming or you see it going, but you know the wind is there and you have to make adjustments based on the wind. Glory to God. I mean, you don't just get up and take off in a plane without knowing what the weather's doing. Knowing what, you know, there's certain adjustments that we make based on things that we don't see. And our lifestyle, we don't live by, we live by faith and not by sight. Because there are some things that we see that we need to make a change in. We can't change what we see by what we see. We can only change what we see by faith. Glory to God. So as a man of God and as a woman of God, there is a lifestyle that we need to adapt to. And that lifestyle is faith. The Bible says without faith it's impossible to please him. So people of God, if you are a Christian and you are not living by faith, you know, you just faith is just a topic that comes up from time to time, then we have some adjustments to make. Let's go to Romans 2. Romans 12, verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed or be changed by the renewing of your mind. That way you can prove that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. <clears throat> okay, so be not conformed to this world. People of God, this world lives by what it sees. If it can't see it, it, can't, it won't believe it. It's only going to operate and it's only make adjustments by what they can see. But the Bible tells us not to be conformed to the ways of this world, but be transformed or be changed. There's a change that God wants us to make, glory to God. And the change he wants us to make has to do with the mind. We have to renew our mind, glory to God. The only way we're going to uh, renew our mind is based on his word. That we may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now we know the will of God is the word of God. So he says, be transformed by the renewing of the mind. And the perfect will of God is that your mind is in line with the word of God. And the word of God comes. Now, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. 
So people go, we don't live by what we see, but we live by what the word says. So we walk by faith and not by sight. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. So some of them may be thinking, but Pastor Henry, how am I going to live in this world not, not living according to what I see? Not living according to what I see. Let me show you. Of course, we're going to see some things. And of course, we're going to make adjustments based on what we see. And of course, we're not going to ignore what we see. But what we see doesn't have to, have to be the final authority. Let me say that again. What we see does not have to be the final authority. But what he said in this word, that what can be the final authority. Now, let me go to 2 Kings. Second uh, Kings, I'm going to go to the uh, sixth chapter. Okay, now this is the um, the king of uh, Aram was warring against the king of Israel. But every time Aram, the king of Aram, would make a move, uh, the king of Israel, the king of Israel knew what he was going to do. Would make a counter move, make a counter move, make a counter move, and he was saying, "What is going on here? What it is?" is Elisha, the prophet, was telling the king of Israel everything that the king of Aram was about to do. And so they said, who is against me here, the king of Aram? Who is against me that this king of Israel knows every step I'm about to take? And so they told him, well, look, there is a, a, a man of God there uh, called Elisha, and he is a prophet, and he's telling the king of Israel everything that you're about to do. So the king of Aram said, well, go and get him, so I may know where he is, and I may be able to wipe him out. So now, Aram, I mean, uh, 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 it, um, uh, Elisha was in Dorum. So when he found out Elisha was in Dorum, he sent, uh, um, he sent the armies, the chariots, and the horses to surround Dorum. Now, so Elisha was sleeping, and his servant woke up and saw all these armies around about them, all these on, and said, oh, master, what are we going to do? And Elisha told him, fear not, because um, those that be with us are greater than those that be with them. Now, the servant was like, huh? He saw this army coming up against them and said, what do you mean those that be with us is greater than those that be against us? And Elisha prayed, Lord, Open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened up his eyes. And then what he saw was, he saw the army coming against him. But he saw around about them a greater army, a bigger army, a more powerful army that was coming against the army that was coming against them. Now, let me tell you, people of God, I don't necessarily believe that he opened up his natural eyes because his natural eyes were already open. But I believe there is another set of eyes. There is a set of spiritual eyes. There is a set of eyes in your spirit, glory to God, that God needs to open up. Because there are some things that might be coming against you. There are some things that might be coming against you that are greater than you are, that look bigger than you are. Things that look like you can't overcome. And then you look at them with your natural eyes. But there is another set of eyes that God wants to open up for you. Just like he opened up for the servant of, of Elisha. So that you may see that greater are those that are with us, glory to God, than those that be against us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. There is another set of eyes that you need to open up. There is another set of eyes. Glory to God. There is your spiritual eyes. There's your spiritual eyes. I never forget when I had a, uh, uh, the doctor told me uh, years ago, I had some issues with my digestive tract, and the doctor told me he was going to have to cut away 13 inches of my colon. But when he told me that, I started smiling and laughing. The doctor thought I was crazy. No, my spiritual, I saw myself healed. I saw myself delivered. I saw myself not cut open, but I saw myself whole, glory to God. See, I saw past what the doctor's report had to say. And there's some things that you need to see past. You need to see past some financial reports. You need to see past some, uh, 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 some physical health reports. You need to see past some bad reports 
that are coming against you, glory to God, and start seeing the report of the Lord, glory to God. Now, go to, let me go to uh, Joshua 1, verse 8. We won't be here long today, but you need to get this. Now watch this. This book of the Lord shall not depart out of thy mouth. This book of the Lord shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. At home, say meditation. Say it again at home. Say meditation. Meditation. This book of the Lord shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou may observe to do according to all that is written therein. Now, check this out. So the book of the Lord shall not come out of your mouth, but you can meditate in. Meditating in it, you speak it to yourself, that's meditation. You speak it out loud, that's meditation. You let it pound around in your mind, that's meditation. You keep it on your heart and on your mind, that's meditation. He said, meditate therein, when day and night, thou then may observe to do. Glory to God. Observation. What does that entail? What you see, glory to God. So you got to see yourself doing the word before you actually see yourself doing the word. You got to get that word in your mouth. You got to get that word in your meditation. You got to get that word in your heart so you can get that word in your spiritual eyes. See yourself prospering. See your business going to another level. See yourself healed. See your relationship restored. See your children delivered. You got to see with your spiritual eyes, what you might not see with your natural eyes. You got to see it in your imagination, hallelujah. He says, meditate there in day and night, that may observe to do. How are you going to observe that? In your meditation, in your imagination. To do according to all that is written therein. For then, for then, then, when, then, when, when you can see it before you actually see it with your natural eyes. Then you're going to make your way prosperous. And then you're going to have good success. Then you're going to have good success. You got to see it before you see it. You got to say it. You got to meditate on it. You got to observe it with your heart. Observe it with your inner eyes before you see it with your natural eyes. That's when you're going to make your way prosperous. That's when you're going to have good success. That's when you're going to get your healing. That's when your business is going to come together. That's when your ministry is going to flourish. That's when things are going to work like it's supposed to work, glory to God. That's when will you start seeing it on the inside of you, people of God. We can't walk around here just shouting hallelujah, going to church on Sunday, watching the broadcast on Sunday, and there's no meditation going on in our minds. No nothing coming out of our mouth. Nothing going on. We are seeing nothing. But we have to start seeing something so we can start seeing success. Good success. Praise God. Good. God, the imagination. That's what's going to lead to the manifestation. Let me go keep going. Now, give me Genesis 1. Now, watch this. Genesis 1, 2 through 6. No, excuse me, Genesis 11. Genesis 11, 2 through 6. And it came to pass... As they journeyed from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us, make, uh, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone, and they had slime for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build a city and a tower whose top may reach the heavens. And let us make, a, uh, uh, make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see, the Lord came down to the city and see the tower which the children of men had built it. See the tower which the children of men had built it. They didn't even build anything yet. He saw something with the children of men, uh, uh, with the children uh, I, I build it. The children of men have built it. They didn't put the bricks together yet. They didn't put the slime and mortar together yet. They didn't do anything, but God already saw where they built it. Being why is that? Because they were talking the same talk. Because they were walking the same walk. They had the same imagination. They were seeing this thing built. Glory to God. Let me tell you something. When you can see it, glory to God, it's not long before you'll see it. When you can see it in your inside, it's not too long before you'll see it on your outside. 
And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, or the people are one, or they are together in agreement, and they are all have one language, and this they began to do. Then nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Nothing will be restrained from you what you've imagined to do. Nothing will be restrained from us which we imagined to do. And we can get ourselves together. And we can come on one accord. And we can get the same imagination. We're going to have the same vision on the inside. We're going to see it on the outside. We're going to see it on the outside. So God had to, had to uh, 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 give they had, he had to twist their languages up so they couldn't understand each other, so they couldn't come into agreement, so they couldn't have the same picture, because if they had the same picture, they would have built that tower, which went up to heaven. And let me tell you something. God's not going to, he's not going to uh, take away your understanding. He's not going to take it away, because when you agree, you're going to agree what he has to say. And let me tell you something. When you start agreeing what God has to say, nothing, even though the doctor said you're sick, nothing. Even though the bank said they're going to foreclose on you, nothing. Even though this, uh, uh, your relationship don't look right, nothing. Even though your children are acting crazy, nothing will be restrained from you which you've imagined to do. Nothing. Hallelujah and praise the Lord. Now, now this is nothing, this is, the man did, this is nothing that man made up himself. Look at Genesis 1, verse 26, where God created man. Watch the good God spoke, spoke man in. He said, in God, verse 26, Genesis 1, 26, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, let him have dominion, period. Let me stop right there. And God said, Let us make man in our image. Who is he talking to? Talking to himself. Who is he talking to? Talking to Jesus. Who is he talking to? Talking to the Holy Ghost. He said, what? Let us make man in our image. And I always like to say, no. What he said is, let's make man in our imagination like us. <laughs> Glory to God. That's why you got to watch your imagination. Because he made you like him. And when God imagines something, it's coming to pass. And when you imagine something, it's coming to pass. That's why the devil wants you worrying about this and worrying about that, worrying about what's going on, worrying about what might go on. He wants you to get that in your imagination. He wants you to get that in your mouth. He wants you to get that in your inner, inner man. But let me tell you something. It's time for we are made like God. It's time for us to start putting the things of God in our imagination, putting things of God in our mind, putting things of God in our mouth. It's time for us to have godly imagination so we can have godly manifestation. Glory to God. Yes, God made you like him. So when God said, let's make man in our image after our likeness, I believe he said, let's God make man, let's make man in our imagination like us. Let him have dominion like us. That's why we have dominion. There's no other animal on this planet. There's nothing on this planet that has more dominion than man. I don't care how big it is, how strong it is, how fast it is, how wicked it is. There's no animal. There's nothing that can come against man because we are made in God's image. Thank you, Lord. And, he made, and we were made in his imagination. Give me two more scriptures. Give me Amos 3, everybody. Okay, now watch this. Can two walk together? Said they be agreed. I want you to say that at home. Say, can two walk together? Except they be agreed. Now, God wants to walk you to your victory. Glory to God. God wants to walk you to your victory. You heard about the uh, sands and the, the footprints in the sand when it was two footprints. And all of a sudden there was only one footprint and people said, well, God must have left me. No, God didn't leave you. God was carrying you when it was only one footprint. And God wants to walk you to your victory. God wants to walk you to your destiny. God wants to walk you to your victory. Glory to God. Somebody says victory time. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Let me end it right here. Go to Hebrews 11. I'll end it with Hebrews 11. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Faith is material substance, material or ingredients. Faith is the substance. Faith is the material. Faith is the ingredients of what you're hoping for. Do you have any hope? Don't you let the devil steal your hope. 
you have hope when you put your faith to work. It's evidence of things not seen. Not seen with the natural eye, that is. Not seen with the natural eye. So let me tell you something, people. You got the material. That's your faith. You got the hope. That comes from the word of God. You got the evidence. That's what you really see inside you. Glory to God. Ooh. That's why I knew that wasn't, I was going to have no surgery on my colon. They were going to cut nothing out of me. Why well, that had evidence? How's that? I saw myself healed. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. People of God, it's time for us to start having a good report. It's time for us to start having a good report. We overcome him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony, by the words of our good report. It's time for us to get this word in our mouth. It's time for us to get this word in our imagination. It's time for us to get this word in our eyes and in our inner eyes and in our spiritual eyes on the inside of us and in our imagination where we start seeing ourselves healed, seeing ourselves prosperous, seeing ourselves delivered. Seeing ourselves to the next level, seeing ourselves going from glory to glory, glory to God. It's time to start seeing it so we can do just like the elders and obtain a good report. Hear the God, don't you let that devil steal your, your hope and don't let them steal your faith. Don't let life steal your faith. I don't care how many times it looked like you failed. I don't care how many times it looked like it wasn't going to work. You keep on believing and you keep on seeing you got to get that picture. You got to sharpen and fine tune that picture on the inside of you. Praise God. Praise God. Now, I hope you got something about that word today. Now, I want to do two things. If you, don't, if you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, that's a must. So if you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, I want you to go ahead and pray this. I want you to say, Father, I believe you sent your son Jesus. To come down and die for my sins. I believe he died for my sins and rose again so that I can rise again to a new life. Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Thank you for saving me this day. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Glory to God. Now, I want to give you the opportunity to sow into the ministry, which is a very, very key and important part so we can continue to do what we do. Uh, you need to continue to get this word. You need to continue in the things of God. Faith comes by hearing and by hearing and by hearing and by continuing to hear. So, uh, I'm going to give you an opportunity to sow. We have several ways we can do that. Right? We can sit, do it by cash app. Our cash app account is a dollar sign, capital W, capital F, capital C, then ministries with a capital M. Let me give it to you again. Dollar sign, capital W, capital F, capital C, then ministries with a capital M. You can do it over by phone at 770-477-8586. One more time at 770-477-8586. Or you can mail us a check. Make the check out to WFCM and send it to P.O. Box 33, Jonesboro, Georgia, 30237. Again, that's WFCM, P.O. Box 33, Jonesboro, Georgia, 30237. People of God, I love you. I thank God for you. We'll see you right here next week, Sunday. And you keep your imagination on the things of God. Be blessed.